everyone we are back today with block 14 from our 2020 quilt and again today's block we're going to be working with that um cat's cradle block so it's going to be constructed exactly the same as we did last time except this time our square is going to be a half square triangle so the last time we made it i'm just going to cover this up we had a large triangle, two small triangles, and then this corner was a solid square. And this time we're going to make a half square triangle to set these two little squares together. So it's a little difficult to see because it's all the same color. And we also want to make this one, this block over here, is also the same, but our large square is an opposite color, and then our half square triangle is um, my dark red and bright red versus the bright red and the white okay so for this block again we're going to need to cut those five inch squares and we're going to cut them in half to make our two triangles for our our large corners and then we needed four for these here setting corners we needed four three inch squares that we cut in half diagonally and I also need this time uh, an extra, two extra three inch squares and a black square and a red square so that I can make my half square triangles from these squares. So when you cut whatever color you choose for this, you're going to cut six of them total. Four of them will get cut up into your small triangles. And the other two you're going to match up with your colored um, three inch squares to make your half square triangles. So once your half square triangles are made, you're going to assemble them exactly the same as we did the last time by putting that uh, tip of your triangle into that corner and then matching the second one on this side. So you're going to be creating that secondary triangle. You always want to make sure on this block that if your my gray pieces are always against the gray half of my half square triangle. So whatever color you make these, they always have to complete in a row. I don't want to put together with the opposite colors. So I'm going to go over to my machine. It's kind of pretty, you could do that, but we're not doing it for this block. So I'm gonna go over to my machine, I'm gonna get all of my half square triangles made, and I'm gonna add my um, smaller triangles onto those. Okay, so I have my half square triangles made, my red ones and my black ones. And uh, remember when you're squaring up your half square triangles to use that 45 degree diagonal line on your seam to make sure that you keep them nice and square. Uh, straight and even on both sides so now I need to add my two triangles and because my triangles are with the gray fabric I want to make sure I add them to the gray side of my half square triangle so again I'm going to place this corner tip of my triangle at the where the two colors of my half square triangles meet and This time I'm going to actually keep my triangle on top. Sometimes I find if I try to, to start with the seam, again it can be a little bit thick and it may not want to pull in. So this time I'm going to start with my triangle fabric on top. Alright, and this time again, I'm going to iron to my square so that I keep the, the tips of my triangle straight. Alright, and now I just need to repeat that on the opposite side. I'd actually prefer to start up here, but in order to do that, I'd have to flip it over. And then I can't see as well to make sure everything's not moving. So I will start where that seam is, is doubled up. All right. 
right, so now I can iron and then we'll go back to the cutting table. All right, so now that I have my the bottom half of my cat's cradle, um, I do need to trim these up again. So I'm gonna use the same method where I use that 45 degree line along the edge of my triangle. I make sure that my quarter inch line is right at the top of where my half square triangle point is. And I'm just gonna trim off any excess. Okay, so this one, because they're all the same color, it's probably a little difficult for you to see them, but the top of my half square triangle is right there and this is giving me my quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna trim all of these up. If you don't have this ruler, you can use um, any square or larger ruler that has that 45 degree line on it. Um, this one, I might try to turn this way because it gives me a better quarter inch mark. So again, I'm gonna line up my 45 and make sure that, and this one actually, my three is right where I want that tip or that uh, quarter inch mark to be. So I can actually look at following my number three line all the way down to my corner and my 45 here. Um, the only issue with this one is my ruler is just a smidge smaller than my block so I wouldn't want to have a block any bigger than this one um, yeah, a lot of you have bigger rulers like this which again as long as they have a 45 mark on them somewhere so on this one it's up here so I could use it it wouldn't I wouldn't have the issue of this one being um, too short but it can be kind of cumbersome with just having the, the length of the ruler and whether you have enough space in, on your cutting surface to deal with kind of all of this extra ruler out here. But again, it works just fine. I have my 45 degree line here. I have my quarter inch mark there. And then I can just trim it off. So pretty much you can make any ruler that you have at home work. Um, just make sure that it's got a 45 degree mark somewhere on it. So now that I have these trimmed up, um, for this block again, so this here block had my white and red half square triangle, so I'm going to add the opposite color for my big triangle. This one had my dark and bright red, so I'm adding my white. So I always want the opposite color of my large triangle. So my black ones will get attached to my red, and my red ones will get attached to my black. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the machine and sew these together. Okay, so I'm working with my black triangle. I'm gonna add the other half that has the small red triangle on. Again, I'm gonna work with my peace triangle on top of my black. And I'm gonna be aiming for that intersection to get that top of that half square triangle nice, nice and close to the point. All right, I'm gonna cut them apart. I am gonna iron towards my big triangle. And then we'll go back to the cutting table. We'll square these up and I'll show you how to lay out the block. So for this block, we're making kind of this spool shape to it. So I wanted my, my black actually to be the color for my spool. So I'm gonna start by having my two large triangles pointing kind of at each other. 
And then I'm going to put the small triangle of the same color towards the center. So that's going to give me my spool shape with my gray background and then my red corners. Okay. I could change it. I could flip my red ones to the middle and flip this one to the middle. So you really have two color choices. Um, you know, I just thought, because I already had a red one here, I figured I'd put the black to the middle. But even after you have your blocks all made, you can play around with um, the different, your two color choices as to which one you like better. And again, once you've made your decision, you're going to sew two, these two together, sew these two together, and then sew one seam down the middle. I think I'm going to go back to my black one. And... I'm going to go to the machine, sew them together, and I will have a photo of the finished block um, in the photo gallery with the instructions for this block. So, hope you have fun. Bye! So, here is my spool block sewn together with my black to the middle. Again, this was my original uh, red and white colorway. And this was the block from my 12 fat quarter group. And this was the scrappy block out of my stash.